Hey team, so uh, this is unit two, lesson two, kind of my video explanation. So for the first one, we were going over Spanish imperialism, but for the second one, I look at British imperialism, uh, title it from piracy to empire. Uh, I split up British imperialism into multiple phases because when we were talking about the cause and effect relationships that we want them to identify and understand when analyzing history, the causes for imperialism at certain parts of British history were much different as were the effects, obviously, uh, because the way that Britain acted as an imperial power differed quite a bit um, over their long history. So we look at these different phases and we do cause and effect kind of analysis for each phase. And uh, it gives them a lot of repetitions to be able to practice understanding cause and effect. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll give you the overall layout of the lesson now. The lesson goal is being able to organize the phases of English as British imperialism with their causes and effects, like I said, through actively participating in a teacher-led class discussion. This entire lesson kind of hinges off of a slideshow presentation with supplementary videos, poems, and other sources uh, to kind of liven up the discussion and make it a little bit more relatable to the students as opposed to kind of academic abstract thoughts. And I'll show you how that works when we actually get into uh, the slideshow presentation. Uh, here's the key vocab, uh, privateer, sati, social Darwinism, and business venture. All of these vocab words, uh, I should probably add one more, but all of them relate to one of the phases that I have determined for British imperialism uh, that we're going to be looking at. Um, you guys will see which one corresponds to which one. Um, but yeah, I should probably include one more for the fifth phase. Um, and then here's an agenda. Uh, like I said, it all hinges off of this slideshow. So we basically just walk through the five phases slowly with the slideshow. And then we look at these little corresponding documents or videos um, as we go through the slideshow. Uh, so this is obviously designed to be like a multi-day lesson. Even if we had 90 minute classes, this would be like, probably a two and a half day lesson. I would say realistically, this is going to take you probably like, a, or it's going to take me, I don't know how quickly you guys are able to teach, but it's probably going to take me like a week and probably some change maybe, uh, maybe even a little bit more than a week. Um, so yeah, uh, basically we just walk through the phases and then after I kind of explain the phase in a, um, in more of a lecture like format, then they watch the video and then we answer discussion questions of that phase. Which of the discussion questions, most of them are standardized, but there's also some that are unique to each phase. So I'll just open it up and share it with you guys. Like I said, this is a really long lesson. Uh, so I'll split up this lesson explanation for you guys into two different uh, videos. So this will be part one. British imperialism from piracy to empire. Like I said, I say from piracy to empire to emphasize the fact that there are different phases that we're gonna be looking at that are quite significantly different. Uh, so first I start off with geographic terminology because sometimes I call it English imperialism, sometimes I call it British imperialism. It all depends on the political climate in the British Isles at that time. So I just want to clarify that for them. This is a really good chart because I sometimes mess this up too. You don't have to do too much with that. Just It's just there just in case you want to use it. Uh, and then there's note taking questions for each phase. So they're going to be taking notes, um, which I will maybe even create like a structured note chart for them. I tend to like to make like their note skeleton charts for them, but this one's not that complicated. Basically they're answering the same four questions for each phase and then there's a unique question for each phase as well. So for each phase, they're answering these questions. What are the causes of imperialism? What are the effects of imperialism? So that's I, um, working with the cause and effect skill we wanted them to use. And then also how does this phase of British imperialism compare to Spanish imperialism? How does this phase of British imperialism compare with other phases um, within British imperialism? So working on the comparison skill is kind of the secondary um, historical skill I want them to utilize when looking at this unit or when learning from this unit. So here's phase one, uh, state-sponsored piracy, late starters to the game of empires. So I kind of try to tell them just how did England start as an imperial power in this phase is kind of like the the purpose of this phase, and also to kind of start them off with the cause and effect stuff. So I talk about how the Spanish and the Portuguese are first, the first to conquer the new world, and they took all those like valuable territories, like the former areas of the Spanish and the Maya and the Incan empires that had all the gold and the rich mineral resources. So by the time that Great Britain had the resources to do overseas expeditions and actually establish 
uh, New World colonies. Uh, they didn't have, uh, they didn't get first choice basically. So they had to have the areas that didn't have all this gold, didn't have all this silver. And it was really hard for them to keep up with the expanding wealth of these, um, of these empires from the Iberian Peninsula. So one of the strategies they used, because they couldn't keep up um, with uh, the Spanish, was using privateers, so state-sponsored pirates, uh, to steal the wealth of Spanish merchant ships uh, and Portuguese, mostly Spanish, because, you know, Great Britain and Portugal are pretty friendly throughout history. So mostly Spanish um, ships stealing their gold uh, to kind of increase their own wealth. Um, because one of the causes of British imperialism, at, at least in this point, I would definitely emphasize to the class, is kind of fear of Spanish imperialism and other empires expanding uh, their wealth and their might at a speed um, that's kind of startling to the British. And it's not just unwarranted fear because the Spanish did try to invade them in their famous um, Armada. The Spanish Armada invasion also takes place during this phase. Um, so it's, it is, I would argue, some like warranted fears. Um, so they feel like there's some sort of need to compete with these different types of empires. So competition with empires would be one of the main causes I've talked about in this phase. Um, but then effects. Um, this is kind of goes into where they actually start establishing an empire. So some privateers retire to England, but a, a, a couple of them, some more brave individuals decide to stay in the Caribbean investing in agriculture, specifically sugar farming, as that eventually becomes a huge economic uh, economic tool to try to go against the Spanish tool of extracting gold. Because they don't they can't they can't mine gold, but they can maybe grow gold with the sugar. Um, so I talk about how a lot of these um, sorry I'm passing the way. Excuse me. Uh, about how oh my goodness, she's stepping on my keyboard. Okay. I don't want to restart the video. So I talk about in this slide about how um, certain of these, some of these privateers, um, they get some of their money and then they decide to actually retire to some of these islands that are occupied, even though they're occupied by certain natives, but not occupied by other um, empires. So one of the, like one of the most famous privateers decides to retire to Jamaica and start the sugar plantation business there and become the governor of Jamaica. So that's how you start to see Great Britain kind of expand, uh, begin expanding and gaining overseas territories as an empire. Uh, I'll probably only go through maybe two more phases in part one. So phase two, early English colonization. Oh, my bad. I'll show you what the videos look like as well. So as soon as you finish up the slideshow, uh, you can ask them these kind of questions. But first, before I'd ask them those questions, I'd go to the video and give them time to watch the video. And then here's the unique question for phase one as you can see right here for the subheading. Uh, so I, there's a video of Sir Francis Drake embodying the ideals of phase one British imperialism. So you just kind of ask them how he does that. Specifically, why is he a good example of a phase one British imperialist? Um, how does he do these kinds of things? And then you obviously ask them these questions as well. Um, I, I kind of want to make it discussion based, right? And then you can't ask them the fourth question in the first, when you do the first phase because I haven't looked at another phase yet, I guess. So I'll just ask the first three and then the unique question I have for phase one. Okay, phase two is early English colonization, mass English emigration. So I kind of talk about how it was a bit of a, people wanted to go and then the leaders of Great Britain, or I guess the English at this point, see I get confused sometimes, uh, wanted people to go as well. Uh, so it was self-determined by some people, but then also some people were pushed out because it was a way for the English to deal with overcrowding in their home territory. I list some statistics. Another statistic I list is like a lot of monarchs uh, gave rich people, rich investors, um, these overseas land, um, but they needed money. So it was a way to fill their treasury. Uh, and there's also a method for dealing with the unwanted, uh, specifically kind of establishing a prison colony in Australia. So uh, with this one, what was I going to say? Sorry. Uh, with this one, the first bullet point kind of talks about the way that the English monarchy and the English leadership uh, were trying to get rid of people in uh, the British Isles. But the second bullet point talks about how a lot of people actually wanted to obtain these overseas territories for various reasons, such as religious, um, like with the pilgrims, and then economic in terms of like plantations um, and making money that way. Um, this is like a, a risky but potentially very 
economically beneficial endeavor as opposed to playing it safe and just sitting and living in the society of Great Britain or England back home. And then I talk a little bit more about plantations, uh, kind of the negative effects. So you can talk about the effects. Uh, question number two with this last bullet point. I said it's huge economic potential for brave individuals, um, but then also those people um, who are there, the vast majority of people who went overseas were actually not like investors. The vast majority of them went in servitude. So they're basically like, um, not serfs, not, not slaves either, but they were like servants for like eight years and they had to like fulfill their contract or whatever. And eventually that system was replaced with actual slavery. So one of the big negative aspects of um, this phase of imperialism of established, establishing plantations in the new world to try to um, make some economic benefit. So obviously you can see the causes are quite different and the effects are quite different in this phase. That's why I divided it up into phases. And the video I had for this one, it was kind of fun. I had the Mayflower voyage, Charlie Brown. Uh, and then my like interesting or unique question for this one was, how did the demographics of those involved in phase two differ from those in phase one? So families came over in this phase, like full families, as opposed to just privateers who retired on these future sugar colonies. And what could be the implications of this difference for both the British and those subjugated? Uh, there's going to be a large push to kind of like establish new um, colonies and kind of have uh, your own population there. So it's going to be uh, pushing out uh, the native populations. Uh, in the actual continental part of the United States in this phase. Um, I'll go to the last one for this uh, topic. Phase three, I call it missionary work, civilizing savage cultures. Of course, I'm obviously saying that uh, sarcastically or not sarcastically. I'm not being like super serious when I say that. That's kind of like the justification that, that a lot of people use, but some of them actually believe that they were civilizing savage cultures. Um, so anyways, uh, the causes of this phase uh, were missionaries strove to introduce Christianity and civilization to underdeveloped parts of the world. So kind of like a moral cause as opposed to economic at this part, um, as opposed to the previous two. So that's something you can touch on when you're looking at the main four questions, specifically question number four. Um, and then I talk about its success, its mixed success. Um, and its difficulties in various places that they colonized during this time period. So I talk a little bit about Africa, um, kind of talking about how this moral phase was backed up a little bit by the, the British Empire actually trying to ban the slave trade and spending like a lot of resources to do so. So it does show that they were trying to be like morally just at this point. Also, they're planning to bring civilization to Africa, but then, um, it shows that they're pushing a little bit too hard on their moral crusades and trying to instill their beliefs on these different societies at the time. When you look at India, when their attempts to Christianize backfire, when they target these specific practices that they deem unjust in India, and it sparks a rebellion and people not being very happy with the British Empire. Uh, so that's kind of the causes and effects of this uh, phase. And you can obviously compare it to the other phases because it's quite a bit different than the first two. Uh, and then you can also compare it to Spanish imperialism because I guess you can talk about uh, God, gold, and glory. So this one is very much on God uh, with trying to Christianize people. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to say for this one, because I'm almost at my 15 minutes, because uh, the app I have only lets me use it for 15 minutes. Uh, phase three discussion, they're going to read The White Man's Burden, which I'm sure you guys have all read The White Man's Burden. And then I asked, what was The White Man's Burden, according to the author? And then the second question I ask is, what might those subjugated under British imperial rule think about this white man's burden? Um, so you can either like read it along with them or have them read it. So you answer that question, the unique question to the phase, and you answer the generic four questions, and then you move on, which I'll show you in the next video. So have a good one. I'm open to uh, constructive criticism, as you guys have more experience than me. And I hope I can help you in some way with this video. Thanks.